So guys, uh, we just left the hotel. We're heading to where we're gonna pick uh, uh, our mode of transportation that will take us to the train station because today we'll be leaving for Abraka. Uh, so we walked up to the uh, to this point and we saw the bike men because we now realized from our last trip that the only thing that works in this city here are bikes. So we waited for a while. We got a bike man and uh, we told him where we were going to. The first person didn't want to go. He said he doesn't know the place. Then someone else came along a few moments later and uh, we got this bike. We told him we were going to the train station and uh, that I didn't want to be <laughs> jam packed or sandwiched on his bike. I told him I would pay for two spaces, but I needed two of them. So he decided to call somebody else. This was one of the things that, that shook me, you know. He didn't just call any other person. He stood there and he looked for somebody that was from his place. Uh, mind you, this man speaks Hausa and I know he's Hausa. And he actually looked for his brother to take us to the to the park. It was, you know, it somehow it was somehow for me in the sense that I just felt, okay, he's looking out for his, his, uh, his brothers. He's looking out for his people. He wants his people to make money. I mean, it, there's nothing bad in doing that. I, I don't see anything really bad in doing that because he wanted to help his own person and so that's what he did he stopped this other bike man and that guy didn't even know exactly where the train was but the train station was but because he knew where the train station was he told the guy not to worry they were gonna go and we jumped on the bike and off we went Johnny was fine, a lot of breeze as you guys can hear, and um, the sight was good, was good because it wasn't even sun sunny. So I mean, the trip was enjoyable. We, I really enjoyed myself going on this ride. You know, one of the other thing that I noticed was this: the bike guy that said that knew the way to the train station was in front, while I was on the other bike behind, and we were going because my editor was in front and. I Wanted her to be in front so that I can see her. So by the time we got somewhere, I, I really don't know the names of all these villages we're passing through, all these small small towns we're passing through. So by the time we got somewhere, the guy slowed down and asked that my bike guy should be in front. And I was actually wondering why he did that. So we were in front, they were now behind us and I was wondering once in a while I'd take a look behind just to be sure they're following us and all that. And uh, at a point we got to this checkpoint. And this was where the Draba unfolded and I knew why he wanted us to be in front. Here's what happened. By the time we got to the checkpoint, uh, we greeted the police officers there, the security men, they asked us to uh, park. They just checked, they asked us to park as usual, you know how it is. And by the time his bike came, the one of the policemen just asked because he wasn't wearing this uh, uniform thing that this bike man that was carrying me was wearing had Urumi bike man number whatever on his back but this guy didn't have his own so the man asked and the bike guy didn't have the next thing was that the policeman noticed that he had this 
cellophane that he used in covering his um, plate number behind. And normally when you see those kind of things, you know that some of these bike men use them to protect themselves from splashes, from their tire picking up uh, mud and water and all that and splashing on their backs or on their passengers' back. So they use that. That's the normal thing that comes to your mind. But as the smart policeman that he was, he decided to, he was telling the guy, you don't, you don't get uniform, you don't have that. They decided to take off the uh, cellophane and he discovered the guy doesn't even have a plate number. That was when everything broke loose. The policeman decided, okay, the guy ain't going anywhere, that I shouldn't mind, they were going to take my videographer, someone's going to take him on their own bikes that they will take us to the uh, train station from there. Somehow, I, uh, I I got caught in this thing. They told me, oh, God, don't worry, don't worry. You can go. Your your lady will go on the other bike. That's the editor. Go on the other bike. We'll take you guys to the station, uh, to the uh, train station. No problem. This guy is going to stay here. He doesn't have a, a, a uniform. He doesn't have a plate number. Why is he drive, driving without the plate number? You know, the easiest thing for any person to do is to just get up, get on that bike and go and leave them there. But I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> so I uh, I also noticed that the bike man was actually urging me to please help him. You know, but the truth is that I wasn't going to leave him there. <laughs> you know, it's not right in my in my own mind. It wasn't right. So I started begging. I begged the police officers there. I really begged them. And, you know, the, the, the thing is, at first he told me he spoke in the language. Of course, I speak the language. You know, and he, we said, oh, uh, please, can you, I was begging for the guy, for them to release the guy. They were insisting, no, 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 that we, we were worried about the guy. We should let the guy stay here. They are going to go, they, they, we should go, they will help me get my videographer, we'll get to the station. Anyway, I called aside one of them and I begged and pleaded and did what I'm supposed to do. Which which has had nothing to do with me in the real in the, in the first place because I'm not the owner of the bike. No, am I? Do I have anything really to gain from it? But I I didn't just want to leave the guy there. So after speaking with them and we have an we had an understanding, the Nigerian way, we they now allowed us to leave. <laughs> Good for a while, met some other uh, security agents in front, greeted them, passed them, and then. got to the station uh, this was what happened I now asked the guys so how much am I gonna pay them um, the guy said well for what I've done is okay anything I give to them is fine and all that so anyway I just felt I gave them something at first I asked them if it was okay with them uh, they were a bit hesitant they were looking at me so I just asked them how much are you supposed to be paid for this when they told me I paid them what they're supposed to be paid I didn't care what money I gave to the to the policemen before they released the guy the matter anyway uh, that was the encounter on this trip we got to the station here the train station you guys can see it and uh, we stayed a while got our train and uh, just watch the remaining you enjoy this anyway if this is the first time you're hearing my voice and seeing my face and you like the kind of content that i create these are travel vlogs that i'm doing just showing 
the country as it is as i'm going through it i uh, subscribe i'm a part of this family and if you really want to help me there is a join button there where you can subscribe to that and then help me financially to do this kind of trips but then at the same time i really really enjoy traveling around the country and very soon i want to believe i'll start traveling to other places showing the beautiful nature that this country this continent this world is you know <laughs> all right it's nice having you guys watch this video if you want to leave a comment please do leave a comment down below it's nice to read from you guys it's always nice and please always like the video that's the only thing that tells the algorithm that oh people like this thing so they can share it among more people you know all right thank you for watching see you guys in the very next video ciao